Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. Fantastic to have you here again, and it's great to be back. Because I just spent a couple of days in Montana skiing with my friend Will Stelter. That was a lot of fun. Make sure you guys go check him out on Instagram. He's a fantastic young knife maker. We, did, we didn't do any making stuff. We just skied, and we shot some guns, and it was a huge amount of fun. But I'm now back in the workshop. And of course, you remember the last thing that I did here in the workshop is I received this surface grinder, this Ajax surface grinder from 1990. Cool bit of kit. I've made one little introductory video to it so far. Now I want to go about getting it started. Started. First things first, this is not a standard British plug connection. I don't think that's gonna go into a wall socket. We need to do a little bit of wiring. So what's weird about this is cracking off this cover, <laughs> there was only the three live wires connected. There was no ground connected, no neutral connected, which is really odd and surprising because the people I bought it from said that they had it up and running. And is it possible to have it up and running if those things weren't connected? Or in transit, was this tugged on enough that it got disconnected? I don't know. What I do know is it means I've now got to work out where the other things go. Looks like there's a screw missing for that. So we'll see how that goes. I've got it wired up how I think it needs to be wired up. Now, my L1, 2, and 3, I might have one of them mixed up, and so this wheel might not spill the... I've been traveling for like 20 hours straight. I'm exhausted. I might have one of my L1 wires, the live wires, mixed up, and so this might spin counterclockwise instead of clockwise. That would be the, the best like bad thing to happen right about now. The worst bad thing to happen would be that this explodes, um, and we all die. You never said anything about that. Do you want to put your eye protection on? Yeah, give me that mask behind you. Hit all the red switches as much as possible. Red switch, red switch. My plan is to like turn it on, make sure the wheel's spinning in the right direction, and that'll be it. I'm not going to run it excessively. And then I'm going to pull the wheel off so I can get the measurements and then reorder some wheels that are going to be the right size so that then I can actually use the thing, you know, knowing for sure that I've got a wheel that, you know, is, is potentially damaged. I think that's a safe thing to do. So, turn it on. And now we play eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tigger by its toe. If it squeals, let it go. Eeny, meeny, miny. Mo! Whoa! It worked! <laughs> it's going the wrong way though. You won't be able to tell because you might have a refresh rate that's wrong on the camera, but this is now spinning counterclockwise. And look how silent it is though, real quick. Can you believe that? Do you. S that is like silent. That's just. Whoosh. Actually, no, you could just listen to it. I don't think there was any point in me trying to like emulate the sound when the sound is right there. But okay, we're done. I'm done playing with it. I'm going to unplug it. Always unplug it before you mess with the electrics. And I'm going to switch over. You'll see. So I'm going to switch this with this. In we go. I'll plug this back in. And... Woohoo! You hear that? It's making a weird noise. I should preface this. We do now successfully have it turning clockwise. But don't take any of my electricing as gospel or any sort of recommendation. I should not be doing the electrics on this. And you certainly should not be following any of the advice that you might think I have given because I've given no advice. Don't mess with your machines and your electrics yourself. It's really, really stupid. But if I mess up, I'm the one that gets hurt. Now, there are other features to the electrics to all of this. If you come around here, you'll remember we did the eeny, the meeny, the miny, and the mo. Well, you'll see right here, we have down and up. And that should be for this. So let's see if it works. <gasps> oh, yeah! That is so cool! Then up. No! Look at that technology! Woo! The old school way of doing it. Oh my goodness. <sighs> the modern way of doing it. Technology. Now this should also be going side to side, and I believe, like this, powered. And I believe this is the switch. Cheek. So let's see how it goes. It's the hydraulic oil. That was scary. <laughs> that moved fast. Oh. 
Okay, that is making a horrible noise, but it does it. <laughs> Whew, that was pretty terrifying. All right, so here's my speed control right there. That controls how fast it moves. Still making a horrible noise though. Okay, but it works. But yeah, that noise can't be good. I don't know what that is though. Maybe it's just warming up. I guess more oil will dampen the noise. Yeah, more oil. Okie dokie. More oil. It doesn't taste good. Look at that! It already sounds better. Isn't that amazing? How long do you reckon we can watch it until we get bored? So now let's see, are we gonna get this to turn? So I don't think I can get it to automatically go in and out. Maybe I just don't know how to use it. Probably don't know how to use it, but it goes side to side. It now sounds a lot better. I'm now gonna isolate the machine again. And we're gonna try and get that wheel off of there so we can have a look at it. Then I'm gonna be able to order a wheel. Hopefully that's gonna arrive tomorrow, which is still gonna be in this episode. And we're gonna be able to actually do some grinding. So, to get this off, it looks like I'm gonna need a thing what's it with two pins, and then a watchamadoo like a wrench, over here to loosen the bad boy. Looks like we have a little uh, tooling project to do. So, I'm gonna get some steel off the racks, we're gonna run into the lathe, we're gonna make ourselves up two prongs that we can weld into a piece of flat stock so that we can hold on to it and then crank it open with a normal crescent wrench. I have drilled these holes, drilled to 10.8 millimeters, or reamed to 10 millimeters. Was reaming necessary considering I'm about to weld this? Probably not, but I wanted to use my 10.8 millimeter drill on my reamer and because it's fun playing. I like making stuff. These things now fit in there really nicely. We're gonna give it a little test fit and uh, there we go. It goes in there, which is nicely. We'll hopefully be able to then get a wrench in there around it and, uh, and crack that thing open. First of all, I'm gonna TIG weld in here. Ugly ugly, nice and ugly, but you know what's not ugly? Check this out. This is made by another YouTuber named Retro Weld. It has a magnetic base. It's made from a motorcycle piston. He sent it to me for hanging up my TIG torch. It is such a beautiful piece of art. Douglas, Retro Weld, thank you. He also did a video taking my burner kits and then making his own double burner blacksmith forge, which is an outstanding video. You can see some clips of it while I'm talking right now, and there's a link in the description so you guys can go and check it out. He did an incredible video. His fabricating videos are unbelievably well produced, really good content. Make sure you go check it out. Douglas, Retro Weld, thank you for the awesome TIG torch holder and for making an awesome video and for the awesome stickers too. So now, moment of truth. <clears throat> yeah, moment of truth. There we go. This comes off, this comes off, and this comes off. It's awesome. I wonder how old this is. Certainly looks pretty dang old, so I'm very pleased I didn't use this. You can see it's got some chips right there. That could have just been a bad time to go and try and use this. This, you know, if you, you can imagine, this might have had so little use that this could be the original one. Who knows? I'm gonna set that there. Ah, uh, actually, it looks like this thing has probably come off at some point. There's some rust back there. We'll give this arbor a little bit of a measure here. See what the nominal size is. 50.88. That sounds like that is exactly a two inch inside diameter wheel. So it's now time to look in the catalog for a two inch bore grinding wheel that is, I believe the specs I found online say eight inches in diameter. This is seven. This is pretty close. Oh, that can adjust down. Seven or eight inches in diameter.
It's now about 10 days after the last clip that you saw of this. Just so you're aware of the chronology, go back to my little skiing trip there, and on that day, we filmed everything you've seen before. Since then, I've done a lathe chuck modification, I've made chuck keys, we've made a pretty good repair on the bridge port, lead screw, and stuff like that. The reason this has been such a delay getting back to this is finding wheels for it was extremely difficult. I uh, tried to order wheels from where I thought I'd get them, and I end up plugging in the wheel size I need, and I can't find it anywhere. It took forever to find a place that supplied it, and then they took them like a week to get the thing here. Five days, something like that. Had to come all the way from Europe. So finally, I have a wheel, and not just one wheel. I bought one of these grinding wheels. I've already always wanted to try one of these for a nine inch grinder. That, that has nothing to do with this video. Hang on a second. Are you kidding? I ordered two wheels. So now not only do I have to clean up all this uh, packing popcorn, but only one wheel arrived and I ordered two. So I guess they're that difficult to come by that they could only, you know, even when sourcing them from Europe, send me one at a time instead of the next. That's all right, at least we have one wheel so we can get started on this. I ordered a 46 and a 60 grit. This has also arrived. Now this sits on here and holds a diamond. Why do we have a diamond? No, sadly, I've not found the lucky woman yet. But we put a diamond here. <laughs> Uh, but this thing sits in here, and what we'll do is we'll skim across it to make sure that this wheel is completely concentric. Not this wheel, this is the bad one. It's to make sure that this wheel is completely concentric and is square to the running of the table. As I said, this has a diamond up top here, but I was very kindly informed. I mean, naturally, it makes total sense. This isn't like completely accurate. It can't be. You know, what we want is accuracy to the movement of the table, not accuracy to this line of travel. No way to trust that that's completely square to the table. So instead, we put that on and we move the table or move this round to make sure the wheel is true. Trouble is, when I ordered it, it didn't come with a screw. So uh, time for a little. Uh, drilling and tapping. is so satisfying. I'm pleased I did that. So that just sits on there like that, and you engage the magnet, that stays still, and, uh, and you're able to chew up a wheel. So now we got that squared away. What I want to do in anticipation for eventually doing a surface grinder conversion, potentially, I want to crack off this guard. Oh, Willy. There we go, that comes off. <sighs> Now my curiosity is whether we can get this to come off. I presume not. What is going on? This used to live on here. No. It's a left hand thread. Yeah, it's a left hand thread. It, it's a left hand thread. <sighs> Man, that's embarrassing. There we go, that cleaned off the rust there with some scotch Brite. So I'm gonna pull the diamond off of this Little diamond, watch my what's it. So I don't need the diamond in there, but what I do need, I think, is I want to cover up that hole up top here. And so we're going to put this back in place. Just that hole stays covered. Ugly doglies, I'll give that a clean and on we can go. Now, of course, you see there's a lot of slop in there, right? It's not, it's not the best thing, and that's just further reason for why it is that we use one of these things. So just clean that up a little bit. This will now go on here. Giving that a little bit of a clean. Screw that on. I don't imagine it needs serious clamping forces, but certainly enough to make sure it doesn't come off. I'm sure that'll do. So you can see just how out of whack it is there. I'm now gonna make sure that this here, that uh, allows our coolant to run, is held at the right height. Isn't gonna foul on the wheel. Reinstall the guard. 
And now we'll just uh, give it a little test run. Doesn't seem like anything too dramatic is happening, so that's good. So here is the coolant tank. Obviously, here's the hose. This runs down to here, and it cools it. I, I, I said water cooling in the introductory video to my surface grinder. It's not really water cooled. It's like a fluid that you mix with water. So I believe you mix this stuff in like a one to ten ratio. I'm gonna have to look at the uh, look at the watchman what's it on the internet. But first of all, I need to see if the coolant pump works. Here's the plug. I guess we'll uh, plug her in and see if we get an electric shock. There we go. It's plugged in. Move that in there. How do I turn on the coolant? Surely there's a button for the coolant somewhere. Was there a switch on there? Does it sound like it's running? Yeah, it's running! So ever since I moved into this workshop, I've had nowhere to fill up buckets. I've had to use a piece of angle iron, like suspended under here. Well, look at that contraption! This is the world's greatest invention. Greatest invention of the 21st century. Oh my goodness! just like clips over that little tap there, and then you get one of these and we'll live in the future. Right, Mr. Popple, would you care to be on tap duty? On with the taps! Woohoo! Does it go any faster? How you doing over there? So bad! Yeah? It's good. Will you quit looking at me? I like to call that joke, I'm pretending to pee with my back turned. I've isolated it and we've got a while before the- Whoa, that's cool! That's such a- that's so badass. That wiring looks awesome. So thinking about this, I probably should have had a, had, a, had a think about how large that tank is and I should have put the fluid in while I was pouring it, then it would have mixed. I'm not that smart. But I am smart enough. Do you have a wrench that we can like- Ow, goodness gracious! Better not be one of those childproof ones, I can't get into those. Good lord! What on earth is this? Ugh, it's man child proof! Right, I'm giving up. Come on! Ah. <laughs> Woo! So, how much am I gonna put in? Well, it says 70 to 1. How much is that? Oh, I think right now it's about 100 to 1. Uh, no, 103 and a half. Isn't that colour beautiful? Right, that's enough. I overshot it, that's 68 to 1. So while that's all mixing up, I'm gonna take this back plate off here. I wanna just have a quick little, uh, little see Ooh, look at that. Isn't that cool? Aha! So now I'm certain, this is the oiler. Let's see how... Yeah, there, there's some dry threads. It would appear it is not very oiled. I can't see anything down there. Uh, I don't know how to work this oiler. This is just a case of it's missing a handle. So, I don't know what has happened with this thing, but... There's no oil in it, and it's not electric. But I reckon, mm, hello. Six mil screw threads into this thing. Ooh, that looks like it could be a pump. And that looks like we've got another project. There we go, project complete. I wanna know if this thing's pumping oil at all. Ah! I just broke it. Damn it. Well, we'll find out if oil's flying. Whoa, would you look at that? No oil is flowing. So I'm just gonna pump some oil through the system with like this. Yeah, have a look at that. Look at that, we got oil! We've hit oil! Ha <laughs> ha! Just gonna widen up this cutout. Now I can access it and just oil it with a pump. Back we go! So my coolant is probably now mixed after all that time faffing about back there. It is now time to see will it flow. Whoa, look at it, it's going! It's working! Oh my goodness! Before I get going, I just want to say you really should follow me on Instagram because my Instagram stories are hilarious. Here, Mountain Dew coolant. The guy I bought this from said that uh, grinding coolant should be Mountain Dew. I, I thought it was a little weird, and I mean it's pretty expensive filling up that whole tank with it, but uh, it seems to be flowing at least. Handy thing is though, just like that, got refreshments on tap. Cheers. Follow me on Instagram, at Alex Steele. For more behind the scenes shenanigans. Okay, so I'm gonna clean this down. We are gonna take our diamond dresser. So after three hours of feeding it down, I'm gonna set our watchman what's it a little bit off center. Engage the magnetic chuck. We're gonna dress the wheel. Don't treat this as a tutorial. The thing about surface grind is, is if you mess up, things can fly. And we could learn how aerodynamic that is rather quickly, I understand. Well, turn on the machine. And so, little trick from Don Bailey. Put your hand behind, I've never done this, don't treat this as a tutorial. Put your hand behind it, and when you feel grit, we have touched the stone. Hey, would you look at that? We're true the stone with a diamond. And come back across, go down another thousandth of an inch. Oh. 
Okie dokie. So let's pretend the experts have told us that that's how much you need to do. So uh, hopefully that means that now our diameter is, uh, is indeed perfectly centered to the spindle here, which means that we can use it. Now, I don't have a way to balance a wheel. As far as I understand, that's an important thing too, to help better your surface finish and your accuracy and not having wheels explode, probably. But we'll use it like this and we'll see, see if it works. So I want to get a feel for how this all works. So I'm going to set that piece of flat stock down there. It's just a piece of uh, eighth inch or three millimeter flat. And we're going to lower the head and we're going we're gonna to grind it. So I need to put that over to there, I believe. This over to about there. I can use a piece of paper to find where we are 0.1 millimeters away. There we go. So now we should be dusting it ever so lightly if... Hey, we're dusting it! Woohoo! In fact, we were 0.04 millimeters away. <gasps> we took a cut! <laughs> so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go side to side with this bad boy. <laughs> this is so cool. We're surface grinding! <laughs> no! That's so awesome. I don't even know how to do it, but it's so much fun. And look, we got green ooze as well. And look at how cool that is with the green ooze. This is so cool. Oh my goodness, and the finish is beautiful. So I was, I was doing some different depths of cut over here at the dial that controls how far in and out we go. And it looks like I got the best surface finishes with about half a millimeter feed of cut, so to speak. And in terms of how much it is we're taking off the surface, we're taking a little more than I thought we were. Um, I thought we were just touching the surface, but you can see we've gone quite a ways down. We've gone below the scale. We're probably like, you know, whatever, half a thou, five tenths below the surface of the steel. I'm in love with surface grinding. So I now want to do another pass and see what the surface finish looks like if we take just three tenths off. Five microns, something like that. Ten microns. I'm addicted to surface grinding. So mesmerizing. Wow. And the green is just so beautiful. Jamie, let's run some B-roll. This is so awesome. And I can't believe how lovely the surface finish is. It's just stunning. Like it is just amazing what surface grinding does. Because you're taking such a small pass, even though it's supposedly 60 grit, it's just incredible. I am so happy, so happy. I'm gonna wipe this down again. I am going to re-true the wheel. Right, so now I'm gonna lower this head here and uh, somehow we're gonna dust off this chuck. Off camera there, I uh, set this out wider and we had this horrible noise that happened, so I was pretty scared there. There we go, touching the paper. Here we go, here goes nothing. We're not gonna adjust our height, we're just gonna skim across in case there are high spots. Obviously I only took our uh, paper width back here, it could be a lot worse elsewhere, so we're gonna turn on the spindle. Open up the floodgates. So you see what's interesting is on that back side, we weren't touching it. The dial stayed in the same place, and here on the front, we're taking almost a full cut. Look how out of flat this thing was. I can't believe anybody's ever used this. This is insane. Check that out. We have contact all through this area here. That's all been a hit. Nothing else has, which is unbelievable just how out of flat this was. That's super, 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 super duper interesting. I'm amazed that anybody ever used this and it's so corroded. Like it just looks like it's hardly been taken care of. We're now gonna take another pass across the whole thing. We're gonna go a little bit deeper. There we go, we got a decent bit of contact. I have no idea what it is that I am doing, but I think it's probably time to dress the wheel. It's got some discoloration, you know, it's gone a little gray, which I presume means that some of this material is now embedded in the surface of the wheel. And uh, as we're coming close to our finishing passes, probably only need one or two more passes to cover the whole area and have it at the finish that we want. Total guess, total newbie. I think what I now want to do is I want to lift up this head and dress it on the diamond. You guys can let me know if I'm wrong. So we have the wheel dressed up again. Hopefully that helps. We still have these little corners here and this side still hasn't been touched. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to 
bring this down again. Doesn't really look like much is happening, but that thing's having a having a whirl of a time. We're gonna bring the head down, and we're gonna take like another thousandths of an inch or something off the face. Um, then maybe take like a light skim cut, just taking like a tenth or something, just to finally get the surface finish down. If that thousandth uh, doesn't get down here, then obviously I'll do another pass. No! Why was I so silly? Oh no! I'm a buffoon! I'm a buffoon! I feel like such an idiot. I, I don't make assumptions. I made assumptions. Look at this. Look at what happens when I run that table back and forth. Look at that indicator. This is unbelievably stupid of me. I assume wrongly. How stupid am I? I'm cutting this thing. And I'm over here like, hmm. It looks like it's going pretty well. I'll just do one more pass. We'll take off another, take off another. Ha, oh, you know, take off another 10. Be all done. You'll never have to worry about the, uh, about the mag truck again. I made assumptions and assumptions should never be made. It is so ridiculous that I would make an assumption and rely on it for the precision of this machine, for being able to know that my chuck was square, but I did not. I'm an, I'm a buffoon. I'm such a numpty. This thing is two millimeters out of square. Assumptions have failed me. It's hilarious, frankly. And the reason it's hilarious is because all that work that I just did, it's for nothing now. Because as soon as I unbolt this and then I put it back into position, it's not gonna be flat again. It's not gonna be put in the exact same way. And so we're gonna have more material to remove. It's probably not gonna be too bad, but we're gonna have more material to remove. And it's not gonna be flat like it is now. Now this is globally flat, but globally flat to how it was fixed, how the tension of the bolts are affecting it, how whatever dirt is on there, because hey, if I'm making assumptions that whoever put this on cleaned the underneath of this mag chuck, considering they didn't even put it on square, like an eighth of an inch out of square. I doubt they cleaned the underneath of it. Considering there was no handle on the oiler and no oil in it, I doubt it. Considering there's paint on these things, I doubt it. And the thing is, is if I had just simply asked myself the question, Alec, do you think for certain that this is square this way and that way? I know for sure what my answer would have been. No, I don't know for certain. Because it is the absolute truth. There is no way to know until you verify it for yourself. Just so you're in the loop here, um, obviously I don't need to undo these all the way for us to be able to tram it in square. However, uh, again, I want to verify that we're flat on the bottom surface. Uh, that way we're making sure that we have as much friction as possible and then make sure that these two, uh, these two bolts here are serving the function that they're intended for as well as possible, which is holding it down. You know, if we're held on one chip and we're bending this chuck, which, the first way I contacted this is very possible, um, then naturally this could easily be uh, skinned around. In case you're curious as to why it is that I feel so silly, this is a better way of showing it. All this corrosion, the high spots here, they're probably like a thousandth of an inch raised up above the surface of the rest of this. There is paint underneath here. This thing wasn't on there. Whoever put it on there, put it right on top of the rust. Or the rust builds up over time and it's just been sitting that long. Either way, when it's sitting on that much corrosion, it's a problem. Because we have this wonderfully flat top that's wonderfully flat to how that was sat on all that corrosion. That's a big problem. All of this has to get cleaned off and I'm not looking forward to seeing what the underneath of this chuck looks like. My impatience has come home to roost. <laughs> well, that's it for today's episode. I need to clean this up and get this set up, and it is far too late in the evening for me to do this now. Well, here it is. This is where I clean up both the surface grinder and the bottom of the magnetic chuck, and then resurface it. And here it is, look how beautiful that looks. I'm really thrilled with that. You can practically see yourself in it. So we got it flat. Back to you, past Alec. Thank you for watching. I hope you learn from me. You learn from my mistakes that comes purely out of impatience and lack of attention to detail. Such an easy mistake to avoid by simply having to think about it, asking yourself the question, trying to ask yourself, can I rely on this being true? 
I made a total blunder. Please do make sure to subscribe. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, at Alex Steele, so you can see behind the scenes. It is always a blast seeing you guys there. Thank you. I'm gonna see you very, very soon.